It's Friday, Wrestling Observer Radio. Garrett and Dave here. We're going to go through all of the stuff in today's issue of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. And we'll probably have some time. So if you have any super chats that you've just been hanging on to, this would be a good time to get those out. We do have one and that we'll get to in a little bit. Especially if you have any questions regarding um, WCW. You know, I mean, as far as like the episode two of uh, Who Killed WCW, because we'll probably be talking about that. And if you have any questions on that, I'm... You know, I just watched it and, um, you know, just and studied the things people said and everything. We'll talk more about that later. I will say we'll, we'll get to that in a few minutes here. I thought the whole thing jumped the shark with that episode. OK, um, I was I was disappointed in it. I would say that I felt that um, I felt that like every time there was like a statement, um, I felt like, man, they need. They need someone to like, kind of like uh, bring this thing back to reality and nobody really did. So, you know, I thought, um, I thought the fact checking, um, was really lacking, you know, as far as, I mean, like, you know, those guys can, you know, guys can, can tell their story and, and give their excuses, but there's also facts behind it. And, you know, you know, I mean, you can't go into the detail that I went into in the issue on a show like that. There's not enough time, but. You know, you just kind of like tell this stuff that doesn't add up at all. Not only that, but I don't I, I imagine this was the intention. Why babyface Bischoff at the end with the romantic story of him fishing in Wyoming? <laughs> like, it's like, good, like, is he the hero? Are we supposed to feel you were supposed to give them the benefit of the doubt here. Like, I, 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 I guess, I guess that's the, the story. The story is is to uh, absolve him of any, of you know, praise him for all of the, 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 the time on the way up, and everything on the way down was, was not his fault. Past the stuff that he admitted, you know, as far as the, some of the booking stuff that he admitted was wrong. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll come. We'll come back to because I do have a lot of thoughts on it that I'm very interested to hear you talk about. Uh, the first thing, and this is just very recent. Mike Coppinger talked to Dwayne the Rock Johnson about how WrestleMania uh, came to be and went through the whole detail of the training and how the whole thing happened. And then at the very end of this piece, there's a quote where Rock says we're on the one yard line to create the biggest WrestleMania of all time and the biggest match of all time at WrestleMania 41 in Las Vegas. I'll just leave it at that final boss style. So he is still on his wrestling brain right now, it seems. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, they. he is very much, you know, and I, I presume a lot of this is because of his parents, you know, and growing up and, and you know, his, his grand father and grandmother were promoters his father was paid based on houses he has a brain that works very much on the idea of you know both whether it's movies or, or wrestling or probably everything that he does on um trying to set records you know and i think that uh whatever records were set this past year he wants to break them and you know you gotta to, to break those records you know you got to um i mean they're gonna be higher ticket prices and that'll break the records but uh you know, the viewership records and things like that. I mean, you're going to have to have a pretty big event because like the first year back after 10 years gone is going to be bigger. Just like the first rock Cena was bigger than the second one. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to have a, a better story and a better buildup uh, to break that record. I mean, now granted, uh, he was not in the championship match as he was originally supposed to be. Um, and he most likely will be this year. Um, you know, I, I've asked about like, you know, I mean, basically like I look at this and go like, Cody can't lose the title for a year. And the kind of the thing is, is, well, you know, I mean, he could, you know, this isn't net, it, you know, this isn't necessary about, you know, about that. And that's why we get the, the you know, Dwayne has that people's belt thing out there as a, backup and that's the reason they brought that into the discussion when they shot that angle is you know if the decision is made for cody to lose although i have no idea who he would lose it to um and and why you would do that but you know you know what i mean other than it makes the rest of the year 
you know, I don't know. I don't say not exciting or anything like that, but people figured out like, hey, Cody can't lose this thing for for a year. It's, you know, I don't know. You know, it, it, it kind of takes something out of like all these championship matches, like the one tomorrow where. Yeah, that's what I just was thinking like they have already sort of telegraphed the first three months that there's no way in hell he's losing. So um, you only got to do it for another nine months and I guess you're good. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Hold on. Espresso causing Man, problems with Dave's headset, me. with his Espresso microphone. Jeez, hold on. He already, uh, he already was doing some pre-show barking too. Yeah, yeah. All right, um, I'm back. No, yeah, just you know, they've already sort of made Cody's first three title defenses like semi-unimportant. I feel as a viewer, like I mean, I, I mean, the only, the only thing, I mean, the the one tomorrow, I mean, the only thing is is like how good of a match is it's going to be because i don't think anyone in the world thinks aj can win and and quite frankly he shouldn't win no way There's absolutely no reason that he should win um and i mean that kind of goes for you know a lot of the card you know and i guess people will say the same thing about AEW too you know there's a lot a lot of championship matches where you just look at him and go this challenger can't win and i mean in the and, and, and look in the majority of cases of pro wrestling championship matches the challenger doesn't win um, but you want, I think that for the big ones, you want the idea that it's it's possible. But um, yeah, um, I mean, the one thing with, with Priest and McIntyre is, is that, you know, there is, there are two very viable scenarios where either one could win, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that, that, I think that's the more interesting match and probably should go on last. Yeah. Um, and um, if it doesn't, you know, well, you know, whatever, but, um, but Cody, to me, Cody and AJ is just their going out there to try to do a really good I quit match even without you know and make it dramatic and just do the best with the gimmick how do you make that match dramatic though we'll you really out. have to suspend disbelief or maybe they're hoping more casuals tune in than normal but I don't know about that one well we'll find out I don't know um that's what they're there for you know that's what good good wrestlers are there to make you suspend disbelief even with full knowledge that you're not going to see a championship change i guess the other match that is pretty interesting also because of the storyline is sammy Zayn and chad gable will see some sort of advancement with otis otis is the uh the fan favorite right now as far as the crowd is concerned whenever he doesn't even have to say anything, and the crowd is just wondering what he's going to do next. When is he going to finally strike back well, at, at Chad Gable? He, you know, he has to do it, and the idea is, is that you don't do it for as long as possible before he starts suffering because he hasn't done it for so long. So you just want to, you know, you want it to go as long as it can because it's tough. Once he does it, you know, this isn't, this isn't like, um, you know, somebody who's going to go and then, like, turn and then win the intercontinental title i don't think and certainly not the world title so it's kind of like okay he turns he has his matches with chad gable and then he's just a guy yeah but as long as they do this you know he's kind of in an exciting program so the idea is to get this program drag it along or, or make it go as long as you can but eventually you've got to pull the trigger um but you don't want to pull the trigger late to where people stop caring. So it's kind of a fine balance. Um, and I think, I mean, you know, they, they could do it this week. I mean, people are ready for it. I mean, it wouldn't be too early, but I don't know that it's, um, I don't know that you can't peak it a little later as well. I kind of feel like he's going to finally strike up the nerve to do it. And he's going to accidentally hit Sammy leading to the finish. Oh, I could see that easily. And then, well, I mean, I think that the idea, maybe the best idea for this show is to have something happen, but have it be ambiguous. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? To where it's like you don't know which what he was going to do, but it ends up with Gable winning. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably time for Gable to win anyway. I yeah, think. I think so. So G Gable, Gable winning when Otis's attempt to help Sammy backfires and then Sammy's mad because he doesn't trust him. And, you know, that's a that's a very viable story. I don't know that's what they're going to do, but it's it's a viable one. I liked the comparison of Jade and Bianca to the Road Warriors because hmm. yeah. that is who they are. And yeah. that is what this match is for. Um, In theory, unless they get very sympathetic because of, um, you know, Kaylee. Kaylee uh, Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of because of 
her, you know, her mother dying and being in, in Glasgow, you know, in, being, you know, and everything like that. It's possible they may give her the feel good moment. Obviously, under normal circumstances, that that would never happen. Um, and the, the the thing about being able to do that is that you can just beat, you know, um, Shane or Zoe. I mean, you're not going to beat Jade or Bianca and then just go back and change it back, you know, in a singles match later. You could viably do that. Um, you know, I don't expect it, but I don't rule that one out completely, especially because, you know, it's the only way to make sense out of that two minute job they just did, because that made no sense at all. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, you know, so if they do come back and score the upset win, at least you can go, hey, you know, um, you know, they can defend against Shane and Zoe because they beat him really quick. And they obviously have that other defense back where they would lose it back to, you know, Jade and Bianca. So, um, you know, that's the options. So I don't I don't know that this is a 30 to one like uh, or even a 12 to one. Just because of, um, I mean, it would have been under normal circumstances. It would have been, yeah. Well, we'll we'll see what the line is tomorrow morning, and then it'll probably tell us something, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably will. Yeah. <laughs> and then Bailey and Piper Niven rounds out at least the show, the car, the the matches that are on the show as of today. Right. Have, have, by the way, have you seen Bailey do the gimmick on? Uh, I think she's d done it on Instagram, maybe on Twitter, where she does like the air squats. And then she's like juggling at the same time. Like, I don't know no. what, 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 what the reason is, but it's kind of fun to hmm. see, uh, you know, she, I guess there's like a concentration thing in addition to the, to the squats or whatever. So, um, all right. So yeah, by the time most people listen to this, I think show will probably, uh, be close to being on. So do you enjoy these Saturday afternoon shows? Um, yeah, actually I do a lot. Um, it's not prime time to get the most viewers, but whether it's UFC or um, WWE, when they do the international shows in Europe, you know, earlier. Yeah, I like it. I get, you know, get it over with and get your day going rather than. Yeah, I like I like it more, honestly, but also, it's not good. It's not good for getting people over and things like that. No, 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 not at all. The I saw Drew McIntyre noted that his wife had emergency surgery, so she was not going to be in attendance. The, I, I couldn't tell the severity. It didn't. I'm hoping that you know maybe it wasn't super super serious. There's just the way that uh, that I read the story. But yeah, um, I don't. I, I, best I don't, wishes I, to her. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Best wishes to her for sure. And I don't know any more than what he said on this one. All right, let's talk about Ricochet. The story okay. it was the lead okay. story in the Observer about where he's going what he's doing he gave no um i guess his did did he officially give notice or his contract is about his to contract expire? Is, his contract's expiring in a couple weeks so that's what's going on and he has not signed a new contract and unless things have changed since monday he was not planning on signing a new contract however the way they did that angle certainly left the door open and I would presume that they would try to change his mind. And they shot an angle that certainly would, uh, you know, would make a lot of sense to bring him back. I mean, they, the angle could go either way. And the fact that they not just shot the angle, but they, you know, pushed it again on Wednesday, I thought was very interesting. Um, so who uh, takes that insane bump on the way out, that's by it. the way? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well. He's not the only one who would do that, but I know what you're saying. Yeah, a lot of guys are. Um, but yeah, man, that especially because it hit the back of his head. It looked like to me. Whatever, whatever it was, I was just I, I was shocked at how at least the the velocity in which he came down on cement. Yeah, uh, from a high you, from a high place. When does his contract actually expire? Because I saw Tony Khan say that he can't talk about someone who's under a contract. So it's right. I, I I mean, it's it's in July. I don't know the date. So sometime soon, at least. Yeah. A couple weeks. Yeah. Um, Prospects in AEW. I think there's a already easy to make match with Will Ospreay. There's a lot of there's there's a ton of stuff, ton of new stuff. There's up and down that roster. You know, I mean, he can. You know, but I mean, it's it's like the the thing is like I mean, we can name all kinds of incredible matches for him. You know, because again, he can work with with the Mexicans. Um, he can work with the Japanese. He can work with the Americans. Um, 
I mean, we can get great matches, but the idea is, is that, um, and we always, we already get great matches, but the idea is, is to uh, get him in meaningful programs and um, get him to, I mean, the, the key is, is to be able to erase, if that's the word, the perception of him and just basically say, without actually saying it, that he's much better than a mid-card guy or low-card guy that WWE had him in and show it without actually saying that. Um, you know, just have him go in. I think it's very important for him to go in and, and you know, be presented as a, as a high-card guy and get in that mix with the top guys and, and, and everything. Um, because right now people, you know, his stock, even though he's far more famous, his perception is not as high as it was when he went there. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. he was a, a big, big indie star, you know, in, in 2017 and everything. And if if AEW would have started in 2017, you know, I mean, he would have been, you know, with the, you know, Young Bucks and Omega and everyone. I mean, he'd have been that first generation of of headliners, you know, you know, probably um, right, right there at the top with all of them. Um, but he went to WWE. There was no AEW when, when he went to WWE and WWE was his dream. And, and I, at the time he went, you know, I was pretty strong that that was the right thing for him to do. And, um, but it didn't turn out as, as I expected it for whatever reason. And there's, there's a lot of reasons, you know, I just thought that his, his physical ability was so much that, and, and that they just wouldn't miss on him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you could argue that, uh, you know, now the argument is, is that, oh, he really, you know, other than the fact that he could do flips, he wasn't really all that good. Um, his promos, you know, whatever. I mean, they, they weren't spectacular. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, I mean, in, in AEW, it is to that fan base that they have, he would have been, um, he would have gotten over huge to that fan base, the original fan base they had. Now, you know, um, it's you know there's a perception of him that he's that he, that both AEW and he have to erase essentially to get him if he's going there you know which we all presume he is but nobody can say it and no one has said it um but logic would tell you that if he does not resign with WWE the only place he'd go is AEW New Japan it's not the place to go anymore it's not like you know 8 years ago where you know people would talk about like ah, i'm gonna get out of wwe and go to new japan it looks like so much fun everyone in new japan's blah 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 and it's that's not the place anymore you know so and, and aw is not the place it was a few years ago in some people's eyes uh, as well yeah i think that's an important thing too in that you know four years ago wwe's not hot and maybe almost everybody you know, who, who, who is not at the top thinks that, oh, you know, the grass is greener on the other side. But now the WWE is hot. Somebody like in the same level of Ricochet or even in the same level of Chad Gable. Chad Gable's, an, an, Chad Gable's another one. I mean, I know, you know, it's not a secret that like FTR really want him there because, you know, they had some of the best matches of their career with Chad Gable and Jason Jordan, and they're friendly with him. Um you know, but he's he's getting his best push of his career, and it's probably not coincidental because he could leave. Um, but it looks to me like uh, he's not leaving. I mean, and and I know WWE again, they gave him a great offer to stay. So, but but yeah, like if it was the way Chad Gable was being used two years ago, three years ago, um, you know, I, you know, he probably. You, you make a good argument that he should go if if the opportunity arose. Um, but, you know, at that time also, you know, AEW, um, there was more of a budget. Um, and I don't know, again, like so much depends on that deal. But, I mean, if that deal is big that they sign, then signing big deals for talent is not um, is not a bad thing financially. They can afford to do it and, and, and still be profitable. So, um, you know, but that's Tony's mentality, what he knows, what in his mind his budget is. Um, you know, I mean, he's he's certainly made budget cuts, but at the same time, um, you know, I mean, there's 
I, I know he said he's up for free agents if the right free agents come there. And um, I think I wrote um, not too long ago that I didn't anticipate a lot of people going this year from, from WWE to AEW. Uh, because, you know, again, like the, the mentality that you're miserable in WWE and all that isn't really there anymore because Vince is gone. And, you know, in AEW, it, it, you know, there's, there's a lot of frustration there because there's so many talented guys that aren't getting a lot of airtime. And so it's, it's, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a different perception, but I know Tony was just like, I'm going after the free agents this year. I'm not, this is not like, okay, I spent all that money on Okada and Mercedes and Will Ospreay and, um, now I'm done. I got to get them over and I don't, we don't need anybody. I mean, he does not have that mentality at all. Yeah. I, and, and I guess the, the thought that I had was with AEW maybe not being the hotbed that they were a few years ago for free agents. I, I almost feel like this is an important one. If, if Tony sees Ricochet as somebody who he really wants, well, he's, show- not gonna, he's not going to bid high for a middle guy. Okay, like it, there's no there's no point in him bringing in a middle guy. There really isn't. If he's going to bring somebody in, it's got to be as near the top guy, or it's not. You know, I mean, there's because there's so many ta- there's a million talented guys that are out there that that you could bring in that are that you could put in the middle. I mean, they need they have a million middle guys. They need. I, I was thinking more from the perspective of. Like, how do you show to someone like Ricochet, who obviously everyone believes is talented, that the grass is actually greener on the other side? Because there may be some talent who is a little bit in the middle on WWE, who Tony believes should be higher. Like, you see how Osprey talked about, Rich, talked about Ricochet in that quote. Like, he holds Ricochet in, like, the highest esteem. Well, a lot of the young guys do. I mean, I, I, I did. I, I, I don't know if I've ever told you the story. Um, do you remember like the first time Ricochet got his his WWE tryout? Um, I don't which didn't, he, where they didn't pick him. Ricochet came in, and all those people that were in the performance center were like, "Oh my God, Ricochet's here!" Like, like <laughs> this guy, and and it, it it peeved off some very important people that their talent, their young talent, mm-hmm. that's not supposed to know anything. They knew this guy, and it was like, oh, my God, Ricochet's here. Um, and there were, again, like I said, there were people there who thought that they should not be um, reacting, marking out, <laughs> whatever the term you want to use, in that level, at that, you know, with that thing, to a guy who, in the eyes of management, never made it. You know what I mean? It was some guy who's on the indie scene or, you know, New Japan guy or whatever. You know, so it's, it's, um, you know, but to wrestlers, um, you know, especially the ones who grew up and followed it like in the early and mid 2000s. I mean, he was one of the most spectacular, amazing guys there was in the world. And, you know, the big question is, is, you know, he's looked good in WWE when I see him, but the onus has never been to be the guy he was in 2017, um, 2017, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, he's 35 years old. Um, you know, I mean, like there's questions, I mean, is, you know, and, and I'm sure that, you know, right away, look, I believe he's going to come in there if he does. And I think that they will probably build relatively quickly to him and will to him and will Osprey. And, um, that would be the match that probably if, if it's done right, we'll get him over like crazy or won't, you know, yeah. um, but I can't imagine, like, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know if they'll do it right away and probably wouldn't be smart to do it immediately. They don't need to rush it. But, you know, it's one of those matches that we are going to see if he goes there. It's a natural. It can't not happen. I guess I just see if they, if Ricochet does great, some of those WWE people may see AEW as more of an opportunity than they yes. previously have seen it as. If he goes and he is higher in the pecking order, which I think he will be, and also become successful and kind of is seen as like a big, big star there. Yes, a mid-card WWE guy will look and go like, you know, like a lot of the AEW guys did when when Cody went. You know, before yes. there was a lot of scaredness. Oh, 
we're AEW guys and you know look look what happened like in the wcw thing and you know with the stigma and everything and it's like cody went there and became the biggest star in the company and it's like well they're not going to hold it against us that we're in AEW, and you know it it you know opened a lot of door doors in in the minds of a lot of the AEW wrestlers and yes you know if ricochet goes in there and, and does super well um you know mid-level wwe guys who think that they're more talented than their push uh it absolutely opens that door in their mind, you know, to like, hey, you know, I don't have to take it here if they don't, if I think I'm better than they than they do, and I'm going to go prove it, you know, especially because if you're the right guy, I mean, the money, you know, the money isn't necessarily going to be that different. You know, a lot of people, it's like, oh, WWE money, and, and WWE, you know, top guys make a ton, ton of money, but AW can afford, especially Again, if if the new deal comes through at a, at a high level, they can afford a lot. You know, I mean, we'll know more when we know more. You know, it's like one of those waiting game things. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's the biggest story in the rest of the year, and and uh, you know, we're kind of sitting here, you know, knowing it's coming to its climax somewhat soon, in one way or another. And then the the next five years of wrestling is going to be determined, you know, essentially by that deal and the commitment that uh, WD, WBD or someone else makes in that company yeah uh, somebody did have an aew and wd wbd question uh said suka says was wbd trying to squeeze tk into taking their deal when the wwe talks happened with them so this would have been months ago yeah also how much of a risk is tk doing or taking letting aew test the market if and other uh, and other bidders don't match his price. Well, has that we don't know that that has happened yet, right? We, well, he can't test he can't test the market for um, still a couple of weeks away. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, of course it's a risk. It's, it's you know because right now you know there's the leverage of I can make a deal somewhere else. If it if he you know goes to the open market and the executives of WBD find out that hey, no one's bidding what we're bidding. Uh, they can they can lower it sure you know there's always a risk um it also could be like uh you know i mean they're coming off that nba thing where they took a risk and the risk didn't pay off um and so now they're scrambling and um you know that's that's just happening so i don't know um you know obviously the nba is you know far more important than AEW, but it's also a lesson to be learned like right now so you know, like, again, we have to wait and see how this whole thing plays out. But again, like, man, I, I don't I don't know that this week's rating is going to be used against them in the sense because it was against the NBA finals and that soccer game, which they know about because it was on their freaking station. But the soccer game did, you know, almost two million viewers, too. So, um, you know, that they know that. So I don't think that like like last week's rating was was good for um, negotiations. I don't know if this week's number is bad. It's not great, though. I mean, I was a little um, concerned just because of, you know, that 18 to 34 drop. It was bad. You know, it was a bad number in 18 to 34 again. But, you know, it's against the NBA Finals, and they've been hit hard by NBA playoff games. And the week before when they didn't have an NBA playoff game, um, they actually did quite well in, in that uh, age group. So it's kind of like – Maybe it is just the NBA. Um, oh, they won't have to worry about it soon. Uh, it looks like the NBA is just about over, right? Oh, my gosh, that series. <laughs> yeah. And NHL, too. NHL might be over tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's smooth sailing until the next big thing, which I guess would be, what, the Olympics? Or, you know. Yeah, for two weeks at least. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, the Olympics aren't until, aren't until uh, July, right? Late July. No, but it's only two weeks. It's not like it's a long period of time, right? Late July? No, no, no. The, the length of the Olympics is only two weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yes, 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 yes. The Olympics is only a couple of weeks, yeah. And then, um, you know, after that, I mean, it's not too bad for them for a couple months. Um, you know, then, you know, for Raw, you know, Raw will, of course, have its, its battle. But Raw is lame duck at that point anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You know, Raw going against its final football season on uh, USA this year. So, I guess relating to the AEW number, and we can talk about the NXT number as well. Um, that overrun, did you see the overrun? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. The other one is like way down. It's like the, the lowest yeah, it's, thing. It's, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. And for that great match, too, with Will Ospreay and Ray Phoenix, which, again, I mean, one of the things is, is that uh, the the idea of marketing a great wrestling match that we know is a great match is not, you know, especially with a, like a Ray Phoenix. It's different from a couple of years ago. We've seen it. Like when Nick Jackson wrestled Ray Phoenix and they did that great number, um, you know, it was like, wow, you know, like it went against everything I was always taught, like great matches, um, you know, great matches that hardcores know about aren't going to draw ratings because, you know, just cold, you know what I mean? You need the story, you need this, you need that. So in the early days of AEW, the novelty of matches that great on television was a, was a draw for them early on. It's not anymore. It hasn't been for a long, long time, but they put a hell of a match on that. Um, and again, you know, one of the things as far as like the ups and downs and everything is like, You'd have to correlate on, I don't think like the ups and downs of the soccer game were going to make a big difference in the AEW number, but the basketball game 100% was, um, you know, so it's like, it, it was, was that at a point where the game was heating up and I don't know, or, you know, the game was climaxing, you know what I mean? Um, because you know, if, 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 if that correlated to that time, and I don't know, I didn't go through like what was going on at what moment. But if it did, you know, then there's a very, ex, you know, very easy explanation for for that happening. Um, I don't know if that's the case, though, but um, because, again, like I, I don't know that that match is going to be a great ratings match. It's going to satisfy some people, um, you know, and it was a, I thought it was a fantastic match, but that's not um, that's not necessarily going to. But you, you and you, you never know. I mean, I remember when when Jericho and Ishii went on last one of the shows and I was like, Oh God, you know, they had a hell of a match, but it's like, it's Tomohiro Ishii who knows him and they did great, you mm-hmm. know? So you, you just, you just never know. But also so much of that depends on what's, what's on other stations at the time. Here's also what I hope hasn't happened is that we have normalized Will Ospreay wrestling on television and it just has become, Oh, it's just Ospreay wrestling another match. Like, We've seen this happen a bunch of times. Yeah, because we see it all the time, and they're all great, but are they as good as – are they going to be as good as the Danielson match? And the answer is no. They're not on television. They're not going to have the time. They we're going to have commercial breaks. And, um, you know, so, so uh, yeah, you're, you're, you know, you're right. You're right. It, 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 but, you, but you have to have him wrestle on TV because what's the point of him not wrestling on TV? He's – you know, it doesn't have to be every other other week. Um, I mean, it's like they they put him with guys. Like the next one, like obviously, is uh, Daniel Garcia. And it's like they're going to have a great match, of course. But I don't think that that's like a match that people are going to tune in in droves to see because it's the same thing. It's like, well, we know Will Ospreay is going to win. You know, he's wrestling Sh- Swerve for the championship. I mean, him and Swerve. You know that that's an interesting one. Um, and uh, you know, I mean that. We'll see what that means because that's that's over the world title and you got the international champion and the world champion and trying to build a little bit of heat between the two of them on on the TV last week. We still got, you know, until, uh, you know, a couple more weeks still um, to to get it hotter. So, um, you know, but that's a different one. That's like the the climax match. These matches are just showcase matches and, uh, you know, showcase match with, you know, Garcia. It'll be great in the ring. That's what it's designed to be. But I don't know that it's going to, you know, people are going to like tune in in droves to see that because is it going to be better than the Ray Phoenix match? You know, I mean, I mean, it's possible, but but unlikely, I'd say. Uh, the other thing about the overrun that I was thinking about is, you know, I don't have YouTube TV like Brian, but I do have Hulu. And sometimes I would say it's about 50 50 where I get the overrun versus it just shuts off right when Tony Schiavone tells me to stay with them. <laughs> and so that's what happened this week. And I wonder if that happened uh, to a lot of people who have YouTube TV or Hulu. Not that that would be the entire reason for that it's, rating to, to be down, you know, but I'm sure it's, it has somewhat to do with it. Um, you know, it has to do with the DVR thing. If you, if you lengthen, you know, I mean, the, the whole thing with me is like, you know, I just always record the next show, you know, when it, whenever it's a sports event, whenever it's AEW, not so much WWE because they usually, you know, um, I mean, USA doesn't let them go past 
what the DVR has. So you're always okay there. But TBS and everything, you know, they make those decisions day of. And um, because of that, you know, it, the DVRs don't always pick it up. Yeah. Okay, and, but if you put the onus on the viewer, you, you're not going to get 100% of the viewers oh, well, you know, no, to fix no. it. And so if you're really worried about that number, they need to be way more in communication with these companies who are Agreed. programming. Like Agre Agreed. But it's the same thing with any TV show that goes long, and many of them do. But like what though? Award shows, sports shows, you know, I mean, um, you know, anything on ESPN can go long, you know, constantly, constantly. Every, every, I mean, I mean, um, I mean, I mean, I mean, like whenever there's a, a UFC fight night, I'm always recording the next show. That's because, interesting because I've never had, you know, I, I mostly watch. I mean, uh, I, I, I've had to cut off on me. I mean, before I won't well, now because I, I always record the next show. I record for an hour afterwards, always for, you know, for for that and a half hour afterwards for um, AW. I think I think all NFL games are baked. It's just baked in. To they may do that recording. with NFL. they may do that with NFL. I'm not. The sure. only time I can remember for the Warriors is there was like a double overtime game where it may not have reached the end of it. But I think they bake in some uh, overrun in 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 the live sports stuff these yeah. days. I, th let's just bake it in for AEW. I mean, I don't know why they're not doing I would, that. I that's 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 a TBS thing. And they should. Yes, you're right. They absolutely should. You know, they oh, they should just program it for whatever it is, 15 and, minutes long. And like Brian, for me, if I really want to go and see what happened, I can go on YouTube. I'm just thinking about for the actual number that that they they want to maximize all of their viewership. They don't want to lose people at the end because of yeah. this stuff. But that also, it's not. Um, that's the same thing has happened with with NXT too. You know, there are times where, but NXT, you, it, it's not a DVR thing because they do pick up the whole show. But um, Sometimes, you know, there might be something big at 10 o'clock that people want to switch to. NXT, mm -hmm. that's true. NXT often loses viewers at 10 o'clock. Some weeks it doesn't. Um, AEW, most weeks the overrun is high. Some weeks it's not. This week it was one of the ones that were, it did go down. Yeah. Do you think it's worth it to keep doing it though? Overruns? Yeah. Um, if it makes, if, if you can tell the complete story of your, uh, that you're trying to tell, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it goes up more than it goes down. You know, I mean, it's, it's, so it's, I would say if it went down more than it went up, it would be different, but it does go up more than it goes down. So I would say, yeah, it's worth it. I mean, there are, there are, there are issues with it and you are going to miss some DVR people doing it. You are. Um, the one that's so weird is like when Tony Schiavone during the show just goes, we're going to have an overrun. So set your DVR. And I'm thinking like, I'm watching it live. <laughs> so it really doesn't matter. And if I'm not watching it live, then you've already missed it. <laughs> I, I can't set my DVR because I'm somewhere else. Because I'd either be home watching it live or I'm watching another television show, which I actually never would do during an AEW show, but somebody else might. And I'm not hearing you tell me this. So it's like when 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 he says that, I always think like, you know, it's like you're you're telling the people who are already watching not to tune out at the end. And if they're watching, they're probably not going to tune out if it's the middle of the main event match. Mm -hmm. The people who are going to, you know, not know about it are the ones that are coming home in two hours and, you know, how that goes. Yeah. Uh, w was, do you think WWE was disappointed in the uh, NXT number? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I mean, I mean you, 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 no one's ever going to say it, but they didn't, they didn't send Cody there not to win. Right. You know, that's what I thought. And, and this was like the week that they, you know, could have, should have, they had everything going, you know, I mean, AW had, uh, AW had two major sports events. Uh, NXT had a free night. You know, it's funny because people are all mad, oh, whatever, you know what I mean? On this one. But two weeks ago, the reality is, is um, NXT, the one with, um, with Sexy Red, mm -hmm. you know, they did it to 0.24 and AW to 0.25 that week. And AEW had, you know, not tough competition, and NXT had the, the NBA game. I considered that a win for NXT. Yeah, you know, even though it's not technically right, it's not technically a win. I did consider that a win for NXT. But this week, um, you know, you can say whatever you want. And when win, it was not a win for NXT, and and it was a one, and it was obviously a week where, you know, I mean, they would have wanted it. I mean, that's why they. That's why they did. I mean, it's not like Cody Rhodes had some major angle here. You know no, what I mean? No. It's like it's very clear that they looked and go, we can beat him. 
Um, we just so we need something to help put over the hump. And they, you know, they came close and they had more viewers, but they came yeah. and they came close. But yeah, do you do what I what I say? It's disappointing that they would probably think it's disappointing. They will never say. But the answer has to be yes, because that's why they did it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. Uh, Connor is out of the, the big UFC show. Uh, did I guess injury? They haven't said what the injury is. They haven't said what the injury is. It's supposed to be an injury. It's supposed to be not that serious injury. Yeah. So they're just going to be able to do it again in a few months, or that's, is that what they're looking that's for? The theory. No one said anything. You know, there's been this freaking cone of silence. I mean, about this whole thing, and even like when they made the announcement, you know, yesterday that it's out. You know, they just said, you know, like they really didn't say much about it. So, um, they, I mean, give them credit. They got this match. Um, you Great know, match, but not the hay and prog. The, the, you know, the, the, the drawing you. near near the drawing of of what the Connor oh, there's just no, there's nothing that is, there's nothing they have that's going to be near the drawing of Connor. I do think that you know, I don't know, we'll have to see, because it's like with Connor, there's always questions. You know, like I I never take anything at face value with him unless it's like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like you know, like if you go like. uh you know, they said he's injured. Is he injured? I mean, it could be, con you know, convenient to, you know, get over the hump of something. You know, I don't. I, don't I imagine with his injuries he's sustained in his fighting career, he's probably always injured. Well, you know, no, no, I mean, a guy like that, especially with that leg injury, with that's a really serious injury. He's always going to be hurting. It's just yeah. a question of, you know, you know, at what level do you fight, especially at his age? I don't think he wants it's I think it's very important for him to not get blown out to be competitive. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's important for especially because he hasn't won, you know, the last few fights for him to win. But with Connor, if he's very competitive and has an exciting fight and, and loses in some form and he, you know, I think it's OK. It's not the best. But if he goes out there and just like loses in the first round or second round and doesn't look competitive. Um, you know, this could be, you know, I mean, even Mike Tyson at the end, if you remember, I mean, his, his pay-per-view numbers, I mean, I remember Mike Tyson pay-per-views doing 250,000 buys, which, you know, at they, the end, they, they, they didn't even have him on pay-per-view at the end of the first uh, of that run, because remember they were putting him on like Fox, they were doing like a lot, like network I, I, stuff with him. Well, that's because the pay-per-view stopped drawing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like he he's not going to draw forever if he's not competitive at, at, at a high level. Um, you know, just that's just the reality of it. You know, um, people will just say he's washed up and that's it. So he has to prove that he's not washed up. And it's been three years. So that's a long time and a major injury to come back from. So there's a lot, a lot of questions, you know, on him as a as a fighter. You know, he changed his body and the whole bit. You know, there's so many moving moving parts rock yeah. should have found a role for him in smashing machine i don't know who he could have played but i should have found a spot um uh, man that's a real good one who could he have played but you're 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 absolutely right um um god there's, there's no irish superstar then yeah <laughs> you know what i mean if there was i mean there was like um i don't know i don't know uh by the way we didn't mention uh rock's elbow that was gnarly <laughs> You know, it's the perils of uh, doing physical roles, you know? Oh, my gosh. Like, that's the big thing that I was worried about was, like, this dude just, like, taking the grappling as seriously as he can and then, like, tearing an ACL or something. Like, Yeah. I mean, hopefully that doesn't happen. I know. I'm just crossing my fingers because, I mean, I, I'm it, very it, intrigued it. at the idea of the movie. I think some of the, at least that one shot we saw of him supposedly trying to look like Mark Kerr looked a little cartoonish, but the story is interesting. I mean, I'll, I'm definitely going to go see it when it comes out for sure. Yeah, it's an interesting story. It's about an interesting, very, very, very interesting time period that, you know, even today's MMA fans, because most of them came along, you know, after 2005 and many of them long after 2005 now. The 2000 MMA is 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 like prehistoric times for them. So they don't know about, you know, the Pride World Grand Prix and Mark Kerr and Mark Coleman and Igor Vovchanchin and, you know, Sakuraba. I wonder if some is anyone going to play Sakuraba and Hoist Gracie in that movie? I don't I know. Seen, I haven't seen them cast, so maybe not. But Boss Rutan's in the movie. I know that. Alexander Usyk is in it as well. Uh, yeah, Usyk's in there. Yeah. 
Um, I think the, the, I mean, I know the reason why I watched that documentary because I wasn't yet, I was close. I was like kind of closing in on, on becoming an MMA fan, but just hearing you and Brian talk about the documentary and the movie that had come out, I, that's when I was like, oh, wow, this is crazy. Like this whole document, like people should go out of their way to watch. It, it was a very good documentary because it, it was, I felt it was pretty honest about many different things, you know, and hopefully the movie picks up on that and even goes in deeper on some of those things. It, it, it could be a good movie. You know, I'm kind of crossing my fingers on that one. Staying on the Connor story here, Patrick wants to know if fans are getting reimbursed for the Connor fight. In what sense? I mean, it's like you can get a refund on your ticket, but you, you know? have to physically just ask for it, and then they'll give it to you because they had to change the main event, right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, you know, I mean, you have to ask for it, but yes, you absolutely can get a refund on your but ticket. But what about people who maybe bought on the secondary market and yeah. stuff like that? You're kind of yeah. screwed, I think. Mm, kind of screwed yeah yeah but you know and people who got their hotels and things like, i mean i guess you could you could cancel the hotels and everything it's still far enough in advance but uh it's still going to cost you money you know air flight you know depending on the type of flight you think it's a tough deal you know um i mean the thing is is it's like i've had people tell me it's like you know you can't trust ufc you can't trust the injuries you can't you know what i mean but these shows keep selling out so somebody's trusting them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I mean, it's like it's like when they moved that John Jones fight, you know, at the last minute um, years and years ago, I thought, man, I mean, they just screwed their most loyal fans and um, it's going to hurt them. And it didn't hurt them at all. And not at all. You know, like their businesses and their business is the biggest it's ever been right now. I mean, they did two and a half million dollars for Nasser Deem Imavab in the main event Saturday night. I mean, it's just crazy like the numbers they're doing now you know compared to five years ago or three years ago even it's just like you look at me like this is this is insane i mean it's one thing for conor mcgregor or or you know you know even islam makachev you know to draw big because they're really top stars it's another thing for these fight nights with no stars just coming into your town and doing you know two and a half million dollar gate that's that's insane Nineteen thousand people was i think in in louisville um you know like 19,000 people for no star power. It's in, it's incredible. How come they don't come back this way? Um, it's you know, not I mean, like they're strike force anymore or, you know, any, there's no local, I mean, they're, 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 they, there's going to be minor league MMA, which we've talked about, but there's not yeah, I mean, no big time MMA out here. I think that it's, 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 you know, a lot of it now is just, uh, with, you know, what governments are going to pay them and maybe, you know, maybe our government, you know, San Francisco, San Jose, Nobody was wanting to pay a couple million dollars to get them in because that's what the, that's what they're looking for now. They got the apex. That's why they run the apex is, is essentially, you know, if you want us, you got to pay for us. And we're just fine, you know, running our own little arena with no fans and um, no expenses and, and just getting our TV money. And that works, too. Silent NXT shows. Yeah. Well, that, I didn't think the NXT show was silent, but it was I, I thought it was pretty dull. Um, I was not. um it wasn't as exciting as it would have been somewhere else, without yeah. a doubt. And, and visual, uh, there, there was a smaller area, I guess, because Vic kept telling Booker T to move out of the way, and he wouldn't move out of the way, and then he lost audio for like three minutes. Yeah, <laughs> he's yelling at him the whole show. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. It, it's I didn't. I wasn't sold on that place. Um, you know, um, after watching that show of wanting to do it again, I thought that like being in an arena, even if it's with four thousand people, it's a lot better as a fan to watch um than than that was i i mean i like like the matches weren't that bad other than like the, I, didn't, I didn't like the ladder match because you know just too 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 much they tr they worked hard but they know. were just scared to screw up and fall and you could see yeah. the you could see the tentativeness in a lot of what they were doing you, you could see if you like really watch it like it's, it's actually interesting because the, the live crowd I think was just there to see, oh, ladder match, let's see some ladder spots. And they got that and they were happy. You know, they're taking great big bumps. Um, for me watching it, it just looked so green, you know, so much timing problems. And it just, I couldn't get over it watching it. You know, it's just like, you know, I mean, this is fine. If I, if I was going to an independent show and I saw this, I'd go like, it's good. But 
this is TV, PLE, you yeah. know, type of thing. And to me, it just wasn't even close. Like if this, if this had been on a New Japan show or this had been on an AEW show, people would have just crapped on it like fierce. But because they're inexperienced women, and and that's a and, and that's a very good reason they're not experienced. You know, then most why of should never, they be doing a ladder match on but, TV? Well, there, <laughs> well, there's that's that's the other question. It's like they're inexperienced. Most of them are. Why is it a ladder match? They could have just done a six-way elimination match, and they wouldn't have had that. The, the, they, they'd be better equipped for it. But By they, the way, I thought all um, – I think all of those women who were in that match, they're all pretty unique and have – you know, I, obviously we, we've seen Meechin for a, a little while now, but the, especially the newer women – they're they're they have unique possibilities with all of them. I think they. I thought um, that's okay. what stood out in that match. If anything, was just how all of these women do have promise. On, oh yeah, on yeah, 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 yeah. No, I I'll tell you, like I when I watch um when I watch NXT, probably more for the women than the guys. I can see like like Jada Parker, you know, just someone who's been there, and it's like she's got something. Sol Ruka for sure has got something. That finisher. You know? It's over. Great, great finisher and and you know, great look and great athleticism. I mean, they're not there yet, but they got something. Um, and you know, it's not, and it's it's like the the competition with the women is different than the guys because like a guy who is a super athlete, who um, you know, who's green in other ways and can do incredible things in the ring. Guy, uh, Julius Creed, right? It's like he's struggling on the main roster. He's not even hardly on TV on Raw now. Um, you know, I mean, they, they I think they're still high on him as, as potential, but it's hard. But with women, I think that um, if you're like a great, great athlete and have pr enough presence and everything like that, I think you can. Um, you're not. I don't think you're going to struggle as much on the big in the on the major. You know, on the major scene. Put it that way. By the way, ladder matches. Yes. Saw the Dax quote. Gets hurt. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's too many ladder matches. Well, okay, Let me say so that right now, so there's too many ladder matches. I, Adam Copeland, in his book, I remember reading his book, and he was Adam Copeland, who made his name in ladder matches, said, you know, that they should only be done a couple times a year. They should never be done on television. They take too much out of you. And I mean. And granted, he's he was wrestling great at fifty years old just a couple of weeks ago until he broke his leg. But um, still, you know, it did it did impact his career. And it's like I think that you know at, at, when ladder matches now don't even have the impact that they used to have because we see so many of them. And it's like that one there, you know, the one on. It's like it's like I just think that like because they're so physically taxing, make them mean something. You know, and, and and save them to the pe for the people who can really pull them off that are experienced at doing it, or or you know, experienced at wrestling to where you would think that you know they would be able to go in there and do it. But it's like, yeah, like um, guys are just you know breaking their bodies for you know and 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 getting injuries doing ladders match and women too. Um, you know, it's it's such a high risk match and and not for great reward. You know, it wasn't like like with Edge and Christian and the Dudleys and the Hardys. It's like they did insane, insane, insane stuff, but they got great reward out of it, you know, because it was so new and unique and it, it jump started their careers. Now, you know, you could do the same stuff that they did. Uh, maybe not because I've I, it's there's very few people. There have only been a few people been able to pull off something at that level. But um, but even, you know, it's like but it's not, but even even with those people who can and have. It doesn't jumpstart your career like it did with those guys because we've seen it. Yeah, so my, my point was that the ladder match has never meant less Absolutely. bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. Yet the injuries almost seem worse because the talent knows this. And so they're trying to do something unique or something crazy or something people haven't seen. And so you see someone like Dax who gets hurt. And I know he's being. Uh, he's been he's, he's, he's been hurt for a long time, but that was the one that like, um, yeah. I mean, that was the 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 the, the thing was the the pile driver on Matt on the ladder, and and he was hurting bad, you know. And he he worked on it, but um, you know, he's, just he's been a good company guy for the comments that that he's making. But we yeah, could very, very good company guy. We could actually 
make the ladder match mean something again if we do it once every six months or once a pay-per-view or something. But now we have this TNT match, this TNT title match, and it's going to be, isn't it going to be like a multi-person ladder match or something like that? Four to six people, whatever it is, at least four and maybe more, yeah. Why? Like, for what reason? I mean, my guess is because... Yeah, that that they the feel reason, that's going to be the most. They feel, they, they feel they feel it will draw, and um, they feel that they want a pay per view with all kinds of great matches, and you don't want all those great matches to be the same. So the latter match, inherently, as far as a great match goes, will be different from the other great matches. So there's your reason. But they yeah. could also do something but like, man, yeah, yeah, they did on this pay per view. We just did it on the other pay per view. Yeah. It's crazy. You know, I mean, they they could go backward a little bit and say instead of having this ladder match, we're going to have two great workers just have a match and we'll pull out some of the high spots and slow it down, which will be crazy unique from the the style that they have. Like they don't have to go to the ladder to make everything unique or to the stipulation or to the yeah. cage or to the barbed wire. Like you could actually slow something down a little bit and 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 make a change in that direction mm-hmm. i know and the the thing is now is um there used to be the argument that well the injury rate is significant that's just the sport you know what i mean the injury rate's significant for for everyone you know every company um it, you know the aw injury rate now is higher because of that i think that you should err on the side of caution because and, and again, it's not like all these ladder matches have led them to, um, you know, explode in numbers. It's, it hasn't. If they don't mean it. You know, you go put a ladder match on TV next week. Is it going to mean you're going to get a TV rating out of it? No, it doesn't mean it. You know, I mean, five years ago, would it? Yes, absolutely. The intrigue, the uniqueness of a ladder match, you put it on TV, would have gotten you a great rating. Now, it, people have seen so much of them. You know, no, it won't. I just always think about the time where um, was it in ECW? It's in Foley's book, but every time he he would just pull out a headlock to piss off the fans because yeah. they were asking for something more. You know, just, he was using sort of the psychology. Of that's what I mean, that's when he was trying to be healed, though. Yeah, he was he was trying the people who loved him. So yeah. right. So so, but I just think like sometimes, you know, if we if we took one step back, it would be altogether unique and different than some of the other stuff. But instead, we're going like above and beyond and further and further and further. It's always going to be that way. It's always been that way for 120 years. Um, but now the, the the problem now is, um, you know, to me is the injury rate. And because of that, you know, that you you have to kind of reevaluate a lot of things, I think. Yeah. All right. I do have two questions at the end that I saved from last week, but let's talk about this WCW show. I was amazed that some of the things that Kevin Nash said actually made air. Um, and I was trying to figure out why they made air because there was nobody to counter what he said to create any sort of conflict in in the idea that what he's actually saying is incorrect, even though as they're explaining what happened after all those things happened, they were they, they were not smart in, in the end. Um, a lot of the stuff that Bischoff said, I guess the the idea is only the people who were following super duper closely are going to call them out on it. But I didn't find it to be all that entertaining either. Um what do you why do you think they decided to do the documentary this way you'd have to ask them and maybe we should maybe well we should. i i thought it was interesting that you know we've interviewed evan before yes, and I, 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 I don't know if he didn't reach out about this one he, he i mean he never he never reached out but he, he did do other shows yeah no i i did but it but that. you know it's a seven bucks thing so there's that too yeah you know yeah. i mean they're they're that the, you know what i'm saying so, so he may not have been able to do the show. I don't, I don't know. No, because one's... one of the things I think that's so fun about Dark Side now, Dark Side, some of it is documentary. There's a lot of wrestling stories and wrestling personalities that are done a little bit, sort of like a wink, wink, 
and and there's a charm to it because of the old wrestler story. But I don't feel like they generally like they have someone like Cornette who knows the history. They have someone like you who knows the history to counter some of the things that the wrestlers say. And in this case, there that person isn't like Guy Evans's role is not to say, okay, here's really what the truth was. Like they're not using him in that way. So what you have is all wrestler stories. And instead you're using people like Kevin Sullivan and Conan as the people going like, okay, that's kind of BS. And Brett's like all the way on the other side. Like he's just completely. Well, I mean, they do, the they do, road. they do it. They do have Brett, you know, and I mean, and all that, but the, um, you know, the, the thing to me, and again, we got two more episodes to go, but what I was most interested in is the last two years, the Stu Snyder, you know, I mean, like, and, and it may be answered. It may be answered. we got two more shows to go. It's like Stu Snyder. Okay, Eric Bischoff, you know, your company almost bought this. You thought they had it. There was a press conference. There was an announcement. It was everywhere. Fusion Media buys WCW, Eric Bischoff, Brian Bedole, you know, all that, right? And Stu Snyder is telling people in WWE, the next day because they're telling me that's got to be episode four it's yeah. there, it's something related it's to like that it's like it's like four. it's like it's like they're telling me no matter what they all said at that press conference eric is never getting that company and i go well i know it's not signed because the, the people at turner told me the same thing they said that like you know just so you know i mean the deal is not done even though we announced it's done the deal is not done but i mean the deal is going to be done we're confident enough that eric is now in control if he can change anything he wants uh, on the TV. And we're, we're proceeding with the finalization of the sale enough to where we made the freaking we did the press conference for the sale. But the other side is going like, there is no deal. It's not, it's and not, not even that there is no deal. I knew that there was no deal. They're, they're saying that he will never get it. And I just thought like at the time when they said that, it's like, well, it is Stu Snyder. He does know people on the other side. I can't dismiss it, but I know everyone on this side from Eric on and all of them. Right. And then, and, and they're all telling me what's going down, but Eric never did get it. You know, and he, but, and the funny part is, is he still, there was still a chance of him getting it right until the end. If he could have, if he could have gotten a television deal after, um, but like, like Jamie Kellner one day comes in, you know, cancels it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, you know, but that was like out of nowhere and nobody knew. Nobody knew that this was going about to happen. I mean, Bischoff didn't know this was about to happen. Um, I know people at the at the highest levels of 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 you know, um, you know, what Time Warner whatever, none of them knew. And it just happened and it's like, well, well what about the sale? And it's like, ah, you know, tough on them. You know, it's like, you know, we have this asset that's that maybe we could sell for fifty million dollars, and now once you do this, we can't sell for nothing. Well, tough on you. And it made no sense economically. You know, they had, and they still had all those contracts that they that they were still had to cover with no company um, because they were obligated to them. Um, it's like this economically made no sense. Plus, like, it's not that their ratings were were great. They were not, but they weren't bad and they were better than you, you would have in that time slot. And, you know, it is wrestling. Wrestling has its ups and wrestling has its downs and. You know, that company had been up and down before and had been, you know, I mean, I, could it have been turned around? Probably not. You know, I don't, probably not, but who knows? You know, I mean, there was, there were plenty of people from Jerry Jarrett to Bischoff to so many others who were willing to take a stab at turning it around. And I can't, you know, it'd been hard, but you can't say it's impossible because wrestling's turned around many times historically. Um, Can you remind me? Because I remember... Being at work, the my company has a, a DSL line. I don't think I had one at home yet. And I'm listening to you, you and Brian, basically break this stuff down almost in real time on the IATA show. Is that the right memory? Yeah, completely. 
we were talking about that completely for the whole last two weeks and it was crazy because you had all these all these disco inferno talents who were just going like oh it's all a work it's all a work they're just trying to <laughs> they're just trying to pretend eric doesn't have it and it's like this guy's frantically trying disco's to get... still running that playbook 25 mm -hmm. years later yeah. or whatever it but, is. It, but it's like it's like um but he was one of the first ones who, who, who picked up on pillman though yes um, to his credit, you know, I mean, it's like when a lot of people were, were you know, believe the Pillman thing to be a shoot, you know, he he was at, at the locker room one day and goes like, they're working the boys, you know, being but, right about that one may have just created a monster, though. <laughs> he just thinks everything is like that now. Yeah, well, it 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 does. You know, that's the people who end up thinking the NFL is a work, too. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, you know, it's like I really want that story on how the hell, you know. I mean, that's what I'm waiting for. We got two episodes to go, um, and they got Siegel. And you, you have no way to contact him, Stu Snyder. Stu Snyder? I don't know. No. Let's find him. So I'm sending the bat signal out. Somebody knows this guy. Yeah. Let's get let's get him on this show. Yeah, we want to interview him. Yeah, that's actually a great idea. It's a lot to talk about because he was president of WWE for years too. Well, I mean, he was you know he was at the time. Yeah. Um. All right. So, I think. Kevin Nash, after the fact, has maybe said that uh, I, I saw a quote. Maybe he was high when he was doing these interviews or something. He he may have said um, almost as if to say, like, don't I, I don't know if he means like, don't take me seriously. But um, I kind of wonder, like, as I was watching this, you know, I kind of I'm kind of answering my own question about, like, how does this stuff make air? But I wonder if he felt that his job was to be the Kevin Nash character the and and you know not absorb the the responsibility and just like blow it off like oh big deal i made a lot of money who cares about this stuff because that's very much how it feels like but if you actually gave him some truth serum and he wasn't worried about you know who's going to hear him tell this story it would be a fascinating look to see what he actually thought being the, you know, always behind Hogan, no matter what, in the pecking order, mm -hmm. but also creating him, you know, turning himself into a giant superstar off of Vince McMahon, you know, not, you know, kind of figuring, okay, you're, you're on your way down here and now then leaving and creating like the, the monster of, of Kevin Nash. I really, I mean, I mean, I mean get him I, to be truthful about some of this stuff. I think yeah. it'd be amazing. Yeah, I mean, the one thing with Kevin Nash is, is that that decision that he made to go to WCW when he went to WCW for whatever reason he made that decision was the greatest decision because he would not, you know, I mean, there wouldn't have been this run and, um, you know, he wouldn't have been part of like, you know, like as new people came in, he would just kind of be, you know, moving down the card in WWE. He'd always be strong. Yeah, because he's so big. Because he's big and everything, yeah, and he can talk. Um, but but he wouldn't have been. Um, but what he was in WCW, I mean, he had you know they gave him and Scott Hall the ball to go, you know, I mean, do stuff that heels, you know, without getting repercussions that heels never got. You know, the heels always had to give it back, and I mean, they never, you know, I mean, they didn't give it back forever and ever. I mean, eventually you have to do a degree, but. They went a long, long time and made them huge. And, you know, and it was a, you know, it was a, it was a landmark period. They, they, you know, you cannot knock that the fact that, that they had great, great success. They did not sustain it. Um, it was not something as it was happening that I ever thought could be sustained. I saw the, you know, the, the, I wrote about the problems that they were going to have, you know, when they were at the top, I told people in the company, you know, you know, like it's like I remember, you know, again, like February 1988, when I told Breslov, it's just like, it's like you're going down. And he's like laughing at me <laughs> because like we, we got like you should look at these gates, look at these gates. And I go, I know the, you know, they're sending me all the advances anyway. It's like, I know the gates. I know your business is on fire, but a pat hand never works and you're not developing new stars. And WCW, this is the one that, that I thought was the killer is that WCW, the brand, was uncool. The NWO was cool. The problem is the NWO was gonna have a shelf life and eventually your brand is WCW, unless you change the entire name of it, which they weren't gonna do. And if they did, it would make no sense because the NWO had to be the rebels. WCW had to make a comeback. 
but you made WCW so uncool that the people just wanted to shit on everyone in WCW. So the cool guys, other than Bill Goldberg, you know, for the most part, you know, even Sting, you know, ended up in the NWO and even Brett ended up in the NWO. You know what I mean? Um, so you made the NWO the baby faces and then you're the NWO black and white and the NWO whatever, but they didn't really feud either. You know what I mean? And there were so many matches. Like, did we ever have the Hogan Nash feud? No. Did we ever have the Hogan Goldberg feud? We had the one match that with a four day build, that was it. You know, there was, I mean, you, you look at these matches that would have drawn at that time and would have lengthened the success, and we never got it because whatever it was, the top guys didn't want to lose to this guy and, and all that, and it was, um, you know, that was another issue. But, but making the heels so strong is, is fine for a certain length of time, but you also have to make strong baby faces, or in the end, you're going to be dead. And I don't think that they really understood that. And Bill, you know, you could talk about Bill, but but they lucked into Bill. You know what I mean? It's like Sting, they they Sting they made, okay? And, you know, he'd been made before, but I mean they really made him big. Bill was um just something that happened and it gave him another year, um, you know, of very, very good business and made Bill into a superstar that people remember for decades, you know, but they don't, you know what I mean? It was like he couldn't do it on. No one at that point could do it on their own because the depth that WWE had was was so deep, and and you know the rest, you know the rest. The, they had a lot of depth too, but but it wasn't, um, you know, it just I don't know. I mean, the the whole the product wasn't as good. That's all. The product wasn't as good. One of the things that I really like about this Braun Breaker uh, run that they're doing with him is. Post WrestleMania, ratings still great, houses still great, and now you have the opportunity to kind of bring him in slowly, and you have all the eyeballs that are still there. So now they're seeing Braun, and instead of oh things are going down and we need to create new stars, it's like no, we'll kind of percolate, you know, percolate some some of our upcoming new stars in a way where we're getting them all of the reps in front of the eyeballs. So if need be, when they're ready, all these people who were watching them on the come up and seeing how impressive Braun Breaker is, they'll kind of be ready for him to ascend to the next level. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is a good time. And I, I mean, that's the thing. It's like you can see that in, in WWE right now with actually several people. I mean, him the most prominent that they're giving them chances and they're giving them exposure and there's people in NXT where you go like that they're going to be stars in a couple of years and it's that is actually a really good thing because if you just go with who you got now uh, you know if 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 you just go with you know Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns it's like you know you might be good for a while but you'll you know nothing's forever you always have to have these new people ready in the mix, not new bodies. There's always going to be new bodies, but new, you need new superstars. You know, there's a difference between, you know, like um, commander, you know, super wrestler, you know, flyer and guy, very entertaining, but he's never going to make a difference in, in the big picture. And somebody like Braun Breaker or Trick, you know, who, um, you know, the idea should be that that they're going to be top, top guys. So, um, and that's what WWE had back then. And and WCW really didn't. WCW was always, yeah, we have all these good workers, but they, they never really got to intermix much with the top guys because the top guys wanted that nice, slow, easy thing at a time when the business was changing. And uh, the slow, easy thing, I mean, it's funny because they, they made WWE obsolete um, as a television product by bringing in this new generation of stars, but those new generation of stars were kept away from the real stars. So they could carry the, the, the um, bulk of the TV time, but the focus was on the real stars who, you know, didn't do those kind of matches and thought those kind of matches were beneath them and just, you know, did the talking and everything like that. And it was a great formula for a while, but then WWE had these, hungry young guys in main events, these Steve Austins in main events that were, you know, doing great, great stuff. Um, Mick Foley and, you know, people like that. And so it, not that work rate is, is ever the difference maker, but 
when you are um when it's old and it's dated and it's really slow that can be your detriment after a while you know a, 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 you know the same guys on top for too long um you know in 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 historically it's usually not a good thing here's a question that i asked john yesterday uh, on our podcast i said if you were to choose between trick and braun and who is the bigger star in 5 years who are you who are you predicting <sighs> it's a hard one because uh this trick has to evolve a little bit more and get better to be the top guy. But if he does, I think he's got something. I think he's got a real charisma. Um, Braun is, is, I think Braun has that same charisma. Braun, Braun, Braun doesn't have that same charisma, but Braun's a top, a top guy too. I don't see Braun as being, you know, the guy you build the whole company around. And Trick, I think, can be one of the two or three guys that you do because he's got the cool factor. Um, I sort of thought of it like a Cena angle kind of comparison. Like mm -hmm. Cena was the 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 mainstream guy. Kurt Angle was the the best wrestler, and I thought they were Braun Braun, Braun, Braun. Braun is a really you know for for his amount of time in the business, um, and he's such a great athlete. Yeah. You know, um, you know I, it's weird. You know, like. I saw his combine numbers and his college football thing. And it's like, man, I mean, like he's athletically, he's like a top NFL player, but he didn't even go in. He didn't even like, he wasn't drafted. Um, you know, he was cut early. Um, he also came out during that weird COVID time when yeah, but, it was but a little harder to analyze like some, some of the guys. Yeah, but he wasn't like a big prospect. And I think some of it was his height. And some of it was being a fullback, you know, and, and, and a lot of it was that he didn't play against like the top, top competition as compared to other people. So he was an experience against top competition, but still, you know, I would almost think you watch this guy and with the confidence he has and everything like that, that, uh, man, I don't know, but it, it I, just actually, it, it makes you think like, man, the top, top level NFL players are like, insane athletically right like to yeah. to be better than this guy who is just a dynamo in the ring like yeah. the the next level of athlete has just got to be like just mind-blowing well the top nfl players the top nba players you know i mean yeah of course they're they're the most gifted athletes that we got in this country because the top people go into basketball and football uh somebody had a question trust the process said Obviously, AEW is relatively in good shape and not remotely close to a WCW fail situation, but curious if Dave sees any similar red flags being repeated in AEW right now that WCW was making. I think that the, um, the feel of disorganization, whether it's true or not, because Tony will always say that it's not, um, but when you watch on TV, I don't have the feel that I do when I watch WWE. And I have it a little bit with WWE too, um, that you know you can see that they're kind of going on flight, but it feels like they have they have a long-term thing. And Tony, it feels like I kind of can get a long-term thing to a degree, but not as strongly as I do when I watch WWE. Um, but with WCW, it was just like, after a certain point in time, it was just like a ship that was, they didn't know where they were going. The waves were taking them. They were not, going in any direction and aw i think that there is some of that too um the waves are taking them you know what i mean it's not like they're taking the waves i guess is the way to put it um but yeah you know i mean i look at um you know they're, they're, they're they don't hate wrestling fans like wcw i don't say wcw people hated wrestling fans they had no respect for wrestling fans it's different um you know, I mean, the people who work, it was funny because um, an AEW wrestler um, actually and I were having a discussion of, you know, the the end of WCW and, and AEW, essentially. And, you know, what do you think? I mean, how do you look at it? And they actually talked with some people in who, 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 had, had, who had experience with both and were just kind of passing along what they had said. And to me, it was like, 
the people in in at the highest level in WCW, like 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 a, 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 a just throw like a Mike Tanay was like like not that he was like a bad guy or anything, but it was like he was looked down upon because he knew a whole lot about wrestling. You mm-hmm. know what I mean, in AEW, a guy like that would be seen as a great resource. You know, but them, it's like, you know, what do you do? It's like being a wrestling fan or liking wrestling was considered like you're so uncool. You actually like this stuff, you know? So it was like, and and with AEW, everybody likes the stuff. They love the stuff. The wrestlers love the stuff. The wrestlers love to look at, you know, I'm not saying all of them, but they love to look at old old matches and they love to study and they, they can't wait to get in the ring and have these great matches. And in WCW, the top guys were just like, how can we make the most money with, without work and how can we con the fans how can we con our bosses you know what i mean how can we con our bosses how can we you know fake our injury when we know it's the nba playoffs for three weeks you know what i mean mm-hmm. you know it's like all these little like swerve <laughs> things right um you know how can we you know on monday night how can i get an injury how can i get an injury in august um and then come back in january when the nfl season's over and <laughs> and i can bring the ratings back because they're going to come back you know you had these people with that kind of mentality out there and um you know it, it it's so it's it's com- it's completely like that aspect is is different and that as as a fan the AEW thing is much better but you know AEW is in a, a tougher position because you know the gap between you know, AEW and WF. I mean, this is a you know, 1.3 billion, 1.4 billion dollar company. Not, you know, when when they were going against them, they were maybe a, you know, at first they were like an 85 million dollar year company, and then with Austin they got really big, and you know, got up to a 400 million dollar year company. But still, it wasn't this giant, giant, giant company. Um, and you know, one thing started from scratch, and the other, you know, AEW started from scratch, and these other guys, you know, WCW. You know, I mean, it's been on TBS in some form for forever and ever. And, um, but yeah, the, the, it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, um, um, you know, the, that from that aspect, but, but I, I mean, I, I, I feel that the, you know, I mean, you take out like if WCW had the rights fees cushion, um, they'd have survived, mm-hmm. you know, that, that AEW will, will in theory get, um, so i mean there is that advantage but there's also the disadvantage that if wcw was started i mean look look ted turner in whatever it was 2004 2005 ted turner you know wanted to start you know for all the stuff about they don't want wrestling blah blah blah, he wanted to start a wrestling company when his non-compete after the sale went through as soon as his non-compete was up he wanted to get wrestling back on that station he wanted um, well, not necessarily. He he wanted a wrestling company to get and get wrestling back on that station because every every wrestling, you know, Jarrett and all of them, obviously, they tried to get on that station and, and none of them could. So it wasn't like they were begging, we need wrestling on the station. The only, you know, the guy that got that was Tony with Kevin Riley. But, um, you know, it wasn't. But but if Ted had, bought, you know, had opened up and started a company, he'd have been back on prime time and all that. And Ted wanted to. But. The startup costs were too high in his book. Um, AW, you know, when Tony Khan started, you know, the startup costs were not too high in his book. And they were very high startup costs. You know, I mean, that's the one thing. Um, you know, will it pay off? Um, would it have paid off for Ted? You know, I think a lot of people thought it wouldn't. Would would it pay off for Tony? Um, you know, I mean, we're going to know in, in a couple months, one way or the other. So, uh, you know, at least for the next five years or three years or however long the next deal is. What about the um, the top guy syndrome, I guess, is, is maybe what you'd call it, and how the promoter makes sure that, that, that the top wrestler in, in his company is the happy. Like Tony Khan had this interesting quote about MJF being back, and he said, we're happy to have MJF back in AEW, I believe, permanently. I don't know what permanently means, it sounds like it means long term. Mm-hmm. Uh, MJF does have a tattoo uh, on his leg, um, but just the you know, I think MJF obviously had a lot of he had a lot of creative freedom in in the stuff that he was doing. Mm-hmm. A lot of people saw it as I'm sure, it as, I'm sure lo- he still does. A lot of people saw it as a detriment. A lot of people mm-hmm. liked yeah. it too. A lot of people thought, yeah, you know, I want to buy these T-shirts, but it does seem like you know, in in 
AEW, the, the whom, whomever is the top guy who I believe it is M- MJF, there's going to be some some liberties there that they that they allow for, <laughs> and um, I don't know if that is similar to Bischoff and Hogan. There's no way that MJF has the type of contract that Hogan does when it comes to all of those things. But I just kind of I wonder about that because. Um, in in WWE, well, while one they thing, okay, the thing is, is, Hogan not only took care of himself, but he took care of all of his buddies. Yeah, I think MJF is taking care of himself, you know, and, and making sure he's going to make sure that his program is. Are you good. saying he has no friends? Is that what you're trying? To I'm say? not saying he has no friends, but he's not like if there is a, a match where one of his friends is booked to lose, I don't think he's going to Tony and go make it a DQ. I don't want him to lose. I mean, maybe, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that never happened. I never heard it happened. I definitely heard it happened with Hogan, you know, and, 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 or a match even being changed or whatever, because, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, Hogan, Hogan not only had creative control of Hulk Hogan, but for the most part, anything he wanted to get done was going to get done no matter who. Whereas I think that with MJF, you know, it's like the rest of the roster is going to do what the rest of the roster does. Um, you know, he's going to be hands on with his own thing, but not with everybody else's thing. Got it. Got it. I think. <laughs> All right. Let's get to uh, let's get to these last two questions. We'll get out of here. Our friend JJ has a question. He's wondering if you've seen any recent movies in theaters, or if you have like a go to that you you would rewatch because you enjoy it so much. No. Not a good answer here. <laughs> I, I kind of, I kind of gave him the heads up on what the answer not, might not, be. Not a good. I mean, I've been to a few, but no, you know, I mean, I've been to movies with my kids. That's about it, and and you know, but not not a lot, not a lot really. No. All right. Last question is from my friend Jeff Hawkins. He said he recently watched Stanley Kubrick's Kubrick's The Killing and wondered if Dave has any cola. Quariani stories or anecdotes. I don't know who that is. Cole Quariani was the, um, he was a wrestler from the um, 30s, probably. He wrestled Jim Londos in the biggest match ever in Europe, you know, that sold out that uh, stadium in Athens with 60,000 people with, with it, it was the stadium that like, the stadium held like 60,000, okay? And then it's like on kind of like this hill. So you could sit on the hill and look into the stadium without buying a ticket. So the Jim Londos Cola Coriani match had 60,000 in the stadium and had 20,000 people on the hill, you know, packed watching it. So there was like 80,000 people watching it, but 60,000 paid, let's say. But so he was a big star in Europe, obviously, to be in that match. And later, he was most famous in the United States, I think. I mean, he wrestled and was a star, but I always remember Cola Coriani as the guy who, um, I guess would be the manager, the handler of Argentina Rocco when Argentina Rocco was like, you know, one of the two or three biggest and and at, and at times the biggest drawing card in the United States, you know, in the fifties, you know, he was like, he was the guy and, you know, he had Rocca's contract. So like, let's say like, like Rocca, like 